Welcome to this HP Technical Configuration Guide. In this TCG, we're discussing HP and Cisco OSPF interoperability. I'm going to explain and demonstrate the configuration of multi-area OSPF on HP and Cisco switches. This is the second part, discussing the configuration of OSPF on HP Comware and Cisco devices. In the first part, we looked at guidelines and command explanations. In this part, we're going to continue the discussion with a practical demonstration of the configuration of OSPF on HP Comware and Cisco switches. We'll start the configuration on HP One. So firstly, display OSPF peer. As you can see, OSPF is not enabled on the switch. Display IP interface brief. You can see the IP address is 10111-10111. So type system view, OSPF. That enables OSPF with process ID one. Create area zero. Use the network command network 10.1.10.1 .1 to specify that OSPF needs to be enabled on interface gigabit 102. Create area one. Network 10.1.1.1. Display OSPF interface. In the output, you can see that the router ID is 10111. We have configured OSPF in area zero. On Comware devices, the area is displayed in dotted decimal notation. So area zero is displayed as follows on Comware whereas on Cisco, it's displayed as area zero, a single number. Either method is correct. Area one, displayed as 0.0.0.1. .0 OSPF is enabled on this interface in area one, and this interface in area zero, which is correct. At the moment, the state is waiting. There are no OSPF neighbors. As you can see here, at this point, the router has become a designated router on both interfaces because there are no peers or neighbors at the moment. The router ID chosen by HP1 is 10.1.10.1, .1, which is the highest IP address on any interface when OSPF was enabled. Cisco and Comware elect the router ID in the same manner. If no loopback has been configured, the highest IP address of any physical interface is chosen as the router ID. As you can see in this example, if a loopback is configured, the highest IP address on a loopback interface is configured. HP2, system view, OSPF, default process ID is one. Create the area, in this case, area one. Network command, 10.1.1.2. In this case, explicit match. As you can see, an OSPF peer relationship or neighbor relationship has been established. The relationship has gone to full. So, display OSPF peer. Or rather, display OSPF peer. A single peer is displayed. The state is full. In other words, we have a full relationship and routes are being exchanged. And the neighbor is the designated router on this interface, gigabit 101. The router ID of the neighbor or peer is 10111. The IP address on the interface is 10111. On HP1, display OSPF peer. The neighbor relationship is once again full, but HP2 is a backup designated router. The router ID of HP2 is 10.1.1.2. On HP2, display IP interface brief shows me that the only interface configured on this switch is 10.1.1.2, and thus that became the router ID. At the moment, HP1 only has one peer relationship. Let's configure OSPF on Cisco 1 and hopefully another relationship will form. So enable, conf t, IP routing, 
Routing needs to be enabled because this is a 3750 switch. Enable OSPF, router OSPF1. Enable OSPF on specific interfaces, in this case 10.1.10.2, in area zero. The relationship should hopefully now come up between HP1 and Cisco1. As you can see, relationships have been formed on both sides. Enable OSPF on gigabit 101, so network 10.1.2.1, in this case area 2. At this point, we should have learnt about network 10.1.1.0 in OSPF, so show IP route. As you can see here, an inter-area OSPF route has been learnt from 10.1.10.1. So the Cisco switch has learnt about this network. The Cisco switch should be able to ping HP2. So ping 10.1.1.2. Ping is successful. The last step is to enable OSPF on Cisco 2 and to confirm that we have full connectivity. So on Cisco 2, enable conf t IP routing router OSPF 1 network 10.1.2.2 area 2 in this case. Hopefully Cisco 2 should form a neighbor relationship with Cisco 1. As you can see, the neighbor relationship has formed. It's gone to a full relationship. In other words, routes are now being exchanged. So, show IP route. Cisco 2 has learned about two OSPF routes. They are inter-area routes. In other words, they've been learned from areas outside of area 2. Can Cisco 2 ping HP2? And to prove it on HP2, we're going to use the command terminal debugging so we can view debug information and then we'll use the command debug IP ICMP to view the ping information. So on Cisco 2, ping 10.1.1.2. The ping succeeds and we can view the debug information on HP2. So once again on HP2, we can see that the ping has succeeded. Control O will turn off debugging. Control L allows us to view the routing table. HP2 has also learned two OSPF routes, network 10.1.2.0 and network 10.1.10.0. HP2 is able to ping 10.1.10.2, which is Cisco 1, as well as 10.1.2.2, which is Cisco 2. We have full connectivity in this network. Some useful commands to aid in the troubleshooting of OSPF. If neighbor or peer relationships are not formed, ensure that OSPF is enabled on the relevant interfaces. So use the command display OSPF interface on Comware or show IP OSPF interface brief on Cisco. So on Comware, display OSPF interface. You can see that OSPF is enabled on one interface on HP2. In other words, OSPF is enabled on this interface, Gigabit 101. On HP1, display OSPF interface. OSPF is correctly enabled on two interfaces in the correct areas. On Cisco 1, show IP OSPF interface brief shows that OSPF is enabled on gigabit 102 in area zero and gigabit 101 in area two. So the first step is to ensure that OSPF is enabled correctly on the relevant interfaces. The next step is to ensure that OSPF peer or neighbor relationships are established. The command display OSPF peer on Comware and show IP OSPF neighbor on Cisco will allow you to view neighbor relationships. So on HP1, display OSPF peer. We can see two peer relationships. 
one to a router with a router ID of 10112, which is Cisco 1, and another 10112, which is HP 2. On Cisco 1, show IP OSPF neighbor. We also have two relationships, one to HP 1 and one to Cisco 2. So display OSPF peer or show IP OSPF neighbor allows us to see neighbor relationships that have formed with neighboring OSPF routers. If neighbor relationships or peer relationships are not forming, commands such as display OSPF error will allow you to determine if there are errors or mismatches between peer devices, such as, for instance, the area numbers being different. Debugs provide real-time information about processes. So on Comware, you could use the command debug OSPF packet, and on Cisco debug IP OSPF packet, as well as debug IP OSPF ADJ on Cisco to check adjacencies. So debugs will allow us to see in real time if there are any issues with neighbor or peer relationships. To see debugging information, on Cisco we could use the command debug IP OSPF packet. We can see that the router received an OSPF update. The version of OSPF is version 2. We can see that there is no authentication being used on this router. And this was received from a device in area 2. This was received from a device in area 0. I'll turn off that debug by using the command unall. We can see router ID information here. So if there was a problem, we'd be able to see, for instance, a mismatch between the authentication and other options. In Comware, the command terminal debugging will allow us to view debugging information. And then we could use the command debug OSPF packet, which provides similar information to the Cisco command, just in more detail. So I'll turn off debugging by using the command control O. You can see here we received an OSPF packet from this source. Destination is the multicast address in OSPF. The router ID, 10102, so it's a Cisco router, area zero. Other information is also contained here, such as the dead interval. The moral of the story is, by using debugs, you can determine why neighbor relationships are not being formed. On Cisco, we could, for instance, use the command debug, IP OSPF ADJ. I'll shut down the interface. So interface gigabit 102. I'll re-enable the interface. We can see OSPF information here, such as the relationship going to two-way. An election takes place, routes are exchanged. I'll turn off the debug, so unall. And if we look back through the output, the neighbor relationship is two-way. There's a DR, BDR election, determination of who the designated router is and the backup designated router. Database descriptions are received. Neighbor relationship went to X start, determination of who's in charge of the relationship, and so forth and so on. In other words, there's a lot of information available here. If there are errors, you'd be able to see that information through this debug. This is what we want to see. We want to see that the relationship goes to full. Routes are fully exchanged. The loading of the database is done and the relationships are formed. The debugs can provide detailed information about why a neighbor or peer relationship is not formed. If neighbor relationships are not being formed, check that you have connectivity. In other words, ping the neighboring device. Use protocols such as LLDP to ensure that you have a connection to the neighbor. Check that you're in the same subnet, that the IP addresses have been configured properly. So ensure that layer one, two, and three are configured correctly 
if the OSPF neighbors are not being formed. In this video, we looked at the configuration and setup of OSPF on HP switches running the Comway operating system, as well as Cisco switches. We also looked at various show commands and debugs that can help you determine why relationships are not being formed.